Wow. You know what I just learned? Mufra. It means like children or kids. But not only that, it's also the name of one of Amazon's Prime's hottest cartoons that features African characters telling African stories. And today, I am going to sit down with the founder of Animax Studios, one of West Africa's most premier studios dedicated to developing children's programs for kids. Let's go. Tim Swain. I am really, <laughs> really excited about this special guest that I have, and I'm looking forward to introducing him to you today. Uh, so, Francis, I That's know you're very busy, very busy. So, for you to take some time to be with me is a blessing. So, for the folks that don't know you, please introduce yourself and, and what do you do? Right. So, my name is Francis Y. Brown, and I'm the creative director and also the founder of Animax FYB Studios. Animax FYB Studios is Ghana's creative hub for animation and also visual effects. And we happen to be uh, Ghana's first creative hub, animation hub. Wow, so Ghana's first animation hub. I, I, I said off camera that I found you because I had a friend in the States, I don't know how he found you, but he, he found your, your Instagram website, Facebook, or something like that. Mm. He sent it to me, and I started just searching through the content, and I said, this is exactly what I've been looking for, because when I came to Ghana, I was looking for content for my child that mm. educates him about African history through the African story. So I said, I have to sit down and talk with you. Yeah. So let's back up in the story. Yeah. Um, way before uh, Animax uh, Studios became what it is, where did the original idea come from? Okay, so the original idea, it, it, came, it came from the time that I was in um, primary school, elementary school. Um, I was born an artist, so growing up I was creating a whole lot of things with my hands. Uh, anything that I come across, I was creating with it to the point where, you know, there are, there are some mosquitoes in Ghana sometimes. Uh, if you live in certain areas, uh, there are mosquitoes. So I was even killing mosquitoes and using their blood <laughs> 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 really? to, to draw on the walls of our washroom. You know, th there are a lot of mosquitoes in our washroom. Wow. That's how bad it was for me when it comes to art. Yeah, so I, I, I did a whole lot of things. I did basketry, I did um, uh, uh, clay making. I was uh, making toys with clay. I was using um, uh, contents to make uh, cars, I mold cars out of it. I was using um, waste uh, slippers to cut the ties of the cars out of it. So I was very innovative in that way, but also not just scientifically innovative, but creatively. And um, when I got to secondary school, the, the time to choose a subject, a course to read at the secondary school, it was very straightforward for me. It was art. I needed to go do my art. So I, I chose visual art, and I went to St. John's School. And from St. John's School, which I also imagined as the best and uh, uh, visual effect, uh, visual mm -hmm. art student. So from St. John's, um, the passion was animation because I was also always watching Cartoon Network. I would run from school to go watch Cartoon wow. Network. Wow. Yeah. So I was I was torn between being a sign artist, a road sign artist, because mm -hmm. that was the booming career in uh, visual artists at the time and uh, also taking my time to work in different fields to generate some funds and travel outside the country to go learn how to produce animation. So I, I started looking for jobs and I got a job at Tema. 
uh, to be a graphic designer. So uh, working over there, I used that opportunity and that time to polish on my uh, graphic design skills and also my knowledge in computer graphics because everything moved from traditional art into digital art. And that was the crossing time for me. So when I got that knowledge, I was uh, fortunate enough to be introduced to the film school in Ghana by my boss because I didn't know that there was even a film school in Ghana at the time. Uh, when I went there, they weren't offering 3D, which I had already started reading in books and also watching tutorials on. They were only offering 2D. So with the 2D, I applied out of about 3,000 applicants. They only selected 150 for entrance, exams, and interview. Out of 3,000? Yes. So they, they, they shortlisted 150, and even out of this 150, they selected only 35. And I happened to be one of the 35 students that were selected. And in my department, that's the animation department, we were only five students that were enrolled uh, in my year group. Um, so, yeah, I went to NAFTI, that's National Film and Television Institute. Mm -hmm. I did a four-year course there, which I graduated uh, in my BA, at BA in Fine Arts, but specializing in animation. Mm, I also graduated as the best animation student and also overall best film student. And um, my film school graduation film actually also got shortlisted in student Oscars, in the 42nd student Oscars, and uh, unfortunately it didn't get to the nomination stage. But it makes me the first West African student to ever uh, uh, get to that level, to that stage. And um, from there, everything was history. Like I said, okay, I won't go to Europe or America, though I had the skills and uh, I had some opportunities to work in some big studios outside, but I, I decided to stay over to create that thing that is not there. I wanted to just create animation films, content, and showing our people, our race, because it's, it's so hard, as you're saying, it's, it's so, so hard to find content that uh, is very relatable to uh, Africans and people in the diaspora, you know? So I decided uh, it's about time that we fill that void. And um, if I don't do it, nobody will do it because everybody is trying to get out of this place for some reason. Yeah, so I stayed over. It was very difficult, it was very tough, but I started anyway, and I got some uh, one or two people coming to the table with me to work with me, and um, from there I, I started growing and expanding the team. Wow. So, so, so let me ask you then: Is, is there a particular focus? I assume it's children's animation, mm. right? Mm. If so, why that focus as opposed to something else? Okay, so um, the focus as of now is now as we sit is more like children's, but then it's not really children in the uh, uh, nutshell of things. Um, the main focus is for us to um, to show a historical piece mm -hmm. and also teach the younger younger generation. So from ages 2 to 13, they have their own uh, content that we've developed for them. And also from ages 10 to maybe 25 or 30 or even 50, we have content for them. Um, the reason why we, we are specific about this is because um, we noticed that with animation, though it is a soft medium, it is also, it can also be a bit hard sometimes to understand if um, you're at a certain age and certain uh, relatability wouldn't be so clear. So uh, we created Mofra channel 
which is purely targeted at, ch at children. And Mofra simply means uh, children in Cree language, which is the most spoken language, uh, the local dialect in Ghana. Uh, Mofra has about eight different shows, which uh, speaks about all types of topics. So we have the family topics, we have uh, environmentally friendly topics, we have uh, topics that seeks to teach uh, the simple arithmetics and also the alphabet to the wow. preschool child, yes. Uh, we have also topics that talks about careers, how to, what, what, how you can generate a career out of your God-given talent. Um, we have a show too that also talks about sanitation, water and hygiene. So all of these eight topics are strategically uh, been planned to touch on the most necessary things in our environment. Wow. Now, when you were in school, you say that this kind of passion started in primary school and it just continued. Mm. Did you see the type of animation that you produce in the schools that you grew up in? Um, yes. Uh, I, I, I so much see it now. Uh, so, when it comes to, I, I, I've named my style Coliko. Mm. And uh, Coliko in um, the fancy dialect means puppet, puppetry. And that was the only form of uh, entertainment. That's one of the forms of entertainment uh, back in the day, in the 80s, in the 70s. And um, because it's no more, I've picked that name and picked a bit of element from that. And to answer your question, that element is showing our complexion, because mm -hmm. definitely that's what I see most of the time around me, uh, uh, darker complexions. And also the kind of, um, you know, when we talk as people, we use a lot of expressions. We use our hands, we use our face, um, also our costume our settlement, the kind of buildings that we stay in. Like um, normally when people hear of Africa, they, the first thing that comes into their minds is hot and touch roofs, you know? So um, we're using our animation to also uh, show the indigenous and the modern uh, living style. Um, yeah, so I can see myself a lot in where I grew up mm. in my animations. I can see where we are going in our animations, like we're projecting into the future because that's also another interesting conversation that always comes to the table where people beyond Africa sometimes think that African can think beyond even like five years or see into mm. the future. So um, we have sci-fi uh, yeah. projects in our Mofra. Wow. channel thing yeah you know what you're saying is so impactful and i think that one of the things that attracted me to wanting to have a conversation with you is the fact that you know i believe that uh, images and media are some of the most powerful tools of education in the world i even think about growing up when i can literally remember i mean i grew up in the u.s you know we had a lot of cartoons and stuff but i can remember mostly all the black characters mm. in the cartoons mm. because that's what I identify with. Mm. And, and the thing is, when, when my son was born, I wanted to intentionally expose him to cartoons that looked like him. Mm. And then when we moved to Ghana, it, it was somewhat difficult because I just, you know, Googled like African cartoons, right? Mm. And sometimes it, nothing showed up because I understand the power of images. Mm -hmm. For example, my son will read a book and he'll see someone who is a black character that's the father. He'll say, that's daddy. A black character that's the mommy. That's mommy. Mm -hmm. And a black character, he'll say, that's me. Mm -hmm. Or even if it's a girl, he'll say, okay, that's... that's The know, girl that he knows. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And then what happens when a child is seeing all of these images and none of them look like them? Mm. The doctors, the lawyers, the successful people. What does that psychologically do to children? So for you to be able to um, have that focus of integrating important life lessons 
into this I think is important. And the, the last thing I'll say is this. One of the things I noticed about, um, I'll just say African in general, because I let my son watch other African cartoons. The difference between some African cartoons and American cartoons is, I noticed that African cartoons are strictly made for children. Mm. For example, I would watch some American cartoons as an adult. And there's some things in there that, like, there's always some kind of like sexual stuff. Connotations, and like, yeah. But it's a children's cartoon, yeah. but as an adult, I'm seeing, why are you making this for my son? Yeah. But on the contrast, I would see the African cartoons, and it's literally for kids. For kids. Yeah. And it just speaks to the different, I don't want to get into a whole conversation about the weirdness, but. Um, so tell us about uh, maybe even some of the, uh, the, the, the characters or the, the different types of shows that um, you have and then where can people see this mm. if, if they're interested. I know they're very interested. Yeah. 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 So uh, basically as you are saying, it's true. And I think I always say that it's a cultural thing where some of these uh, sexual connotations and um, things are not so much of a bother to the Western world. I've had some interns come to the studio, who, which um, they, they are not from Ghana, they are from America or Europe. And the parents will tell you, hey, talking about sex is not a problem in our house. Which I think at some age is good yeah. to have that, but some age is not, it's yeah. not appropriate at all. Um, yeah, so when it comes to characters that we have in our shows, uh, we have Joe Boy. Joe Boy is this uh, nerdy kid who happens to have his own lab. And uh, in that lab, he also has a traveling time machine. So he meets with some of his friends, those who are troubled, and you know, those who are curious to know about the lab, or those who want to really know about their talent or don't, are confused about what they want to be in future. Because up to now, you can even have a 30 year old person who doesn't know what they want to do in life. So Joe Boy will use his time machine, travel with that kid to any part of the world or even in the continent to meet someone who has made it in that particular field that the wow. person finds themselves wow. in. So in our first episode, we, we have Joe Boy taking us to Ward Pele. We go to Rio and he takes us through the career of football and makes us understand that football is not just about kicking the ball. There's a whole lot to it. Like there's a whole lot of professions in that field of football. Um, we have uh, Periscope. Periscope is about water, health, and sanitation. Mm. And uh, with Periscope, we have two uh, journalists. We have the news anchor, and we have the journalists on the field. And they are always reporting about situations on the ground. And it's not always the negative situations. Mm. It's not like the big corporation news that is uh, mm. sensational, but rather sometimes uh, we talk about what a community is doing right. Some communities are open defecation free and we kind of talk to them to know how they were able to achieve that. Um, some communities have created their own source of power uh, to generate light and how do they do that and how are they sustaining it. All these kind of positive news and sometimes yes, the wrong things that people are doing and how best they can change their attitudes. Um, we also have, um, uh, we love learning, that's for the preschool. So we teach them the alphabet, we teach them the numbers, one, two, three, two hundred. We teach them simple additions and subtractions. We teach them shapes, colors, and all that. And uh, with the alphabet in, uh, uh, in particular, we've intentionally, and spelling, we've intentionally uh, imbibed it in the African context. Mm -hmm. So if we say A, we don't say A for Af uh, Apple, mm -hmm. but we say A for Africa, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, and also we have Captain Z. Captain Z is a sci-fi show where we have a very old baobab tree mm -hmm. 
in baobab tree in Ghana in Africa signify, uh, signifies uh, life. So um, Captain Z happens to be a young girl who likes nature. She loves nature and hates pollution. So the two of them team. And inside the baobab tree is a whole lab, a science lab, wow. where there's also this uh, time traveling machine where uh, uh, Zara will sit in and will transform into a superhero character and go into the future or the past to solve an environmental problem. Wow. Yes. Um, we have the Kukwa Nancy folklore, folk tale stories. Um, Kukwa Nancy is the original Spider-Man. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of that name before, Kukwa Nancy. Uh, it originates from the Akan folklore, mm -hmm. and uh, we tell the story of that. And we have the Kuntus. The Kuntus is a family show, mm -hmm. and with Kuntus, we uh, tend to teach people how to families actually how to live in a very coexisting way. How the grandfather, the mother, the father, the children, the grandchildren. Um, come together and live in harmony. So uh, we tackle things like abuse, especially in really? families we wow. tackle verbal abuse. Wow. How it, it, it's very bad to the psyche of the children. So we teach them how to, we teach even parents how to apologize to their kids when they offend them because in our society, in our culture, <laughs> the elderly can't be wrong, you know? So all of yeah. those norms, that negative norms, we try to uh, uh, show the effects and also we show the good side of it if you, we turn it around. Wow. Um, we have a show too like uh, Zina the Zebra, which is about uh, road safety, how we have to use the best ways of using road and road safety. Um, we have a show to like uh, uh, Way to Go. Mm -hmm. Way to Go is uh, centered in a classroom where uh, students learn how to coexist among themselves, mm -hmm. how to say sorry, how to say please, um, the, the right way of asking for something from a friend and taking it with force, mm -hmm. um, bullying and all that, other things that happens in a classroom setting. So we have some very engaging wow. uh, 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 subjects or shows in Mafra. But aside Mafra, we also have other IPs that is uh, more universal. Uh, we have Tutu. Uh, Tutu is about the 17th century formation of the Ashanti Kingdom. And the Ashanti Kingdom in the 17th century was if not the biggest, one of the biggest kingdoms out of Africa. So we tell the story of how Okonfanachi and uh, King Oseti too came together. Mm -hmm. But before then, he wasn't a king. Uh, he was a young man. Uh, came together to unite the eight clans of Akan mm -hmm. to defeat their overlords. That's danger. And this is also a project that we're trying to produce in series. So we'll be having about three seasons, and in every season we have 12 episodes, and in every episode we have about 24 minutes. Wow. Yes, um, aside that too, we have the, uh, the comedy skits, Kilo and Kwata, uh, two best friends who are always trying to outsmart each other. And uh, you end up finding that at the end of the day, they are all fools. <laughs> But in a very interesting way, um, it is nothing. It has nothing to do with vulgarism or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. So, so I'm sure by now people are asking themselves, where can well, I see this? Yes. Uh, so we have um, the free to air stuff uh, on YouTube. You can find uh, some of our content there. So the, the link is right there. You guys see the link. Right, so go ahead and click that link right now, it's there. Yes, subscribe too. Um, so, and um, we also, we were fortunate enough to get Mofra, the pilot episode picked by Amazon Prime. 
so it's on Amazon if you want to see all the eight shows uh, on Mofra it's on Amazon Prime and uh, the name of the project is Mofra M M O F R A Wow, wow. Yeah. And all the descriptions and all the links that people need will be, you guys see it already, it's right there. It's in the description box. Click that button, you see all of it right there. Okay, cool. So, um, one of my final questions is, we were chatting off camera that sometimes the arts is not as maybe celebrated or maybe appreciated sometimes in Ghana. So if there's someone watching this, who, like your younger self, who right. has this imagination to, to bring his, his, his God-given talents and represent his culture well, but they're like, I'll just maybe study this for money mm -hmm. because in Ghana here, Charlie, we must eat. Yeah. So me drawing some stuff, so it won't pay me anything. So what would be your, your, your advice or your encouragement to that young person that's still trying to dream um, what I would tell such uh, a person is uh, to not to give up, that's the first thing, never to give up and uh, always to find ways to motivate themselves. Yeah, even if you go through art block, you just find what inspires you. If you have to walk around the city, listen to music, watch films, talk to people, um, but never to give up on your art because it's a God-given talent and once it's given to you, it means that there's a purpose for it and you need to always uh, chase that purpose to the very end. And um, the moment you notice that you're chasing your purpose, your goal, um, you, and you're very consistent about it, you definitely see a lot of progress and improvement in your life. Um, as an artist, I've also come to realize that it's not about money, though we need money to sustain ourselves and our creativity and to be even able to improve in the quality that we produce because the world is moving to a stage in technology where you need money to get those gadgets. But our main purpose is to make lives easy, to solve problems through mm -hmm. our art. Wow. So, um, we can never, we are, we are like the prophets in our field, we are like mm -hmm. the preachers. So we mm -hmm. preach with our art, we kind of impact lives with our creativity. So we never have to give up on who we are. Wow. That's the perfect way to end it. I don't think there's anything left to say, uh, but thank you for taking the time to, to be with me today. I'm sure when people watch this, they will be inspired, they'll be motivated, and they will go and support, I'm sure of it. I'm absolutely sure of it. So um, we look forward to, um, I look forward to showing my, my son uh, my some friend. of the work and then yeah. uh, being able to even show you his reaction. For sure, I would, I would love that. I would yeah. definitely love to see his reactions for sure. I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. Okay. And, and for you, I know you guys will inspire, you encourage. So if so, as always, if you like this content, make sure you subscribe Make sure you like this video and until next time,